think Roosevelt handled it brilliantly in the sense that the fundamental job in the Second World War was to mobilize the American economy. Congress granted Roosevelt sweeping wartime powers to reorganize American industry, and he made the most of them. The result was improvised, inconsistent, and often inefficient. Six new federal agencies with overlapping responsibilities were established in a single year. But it would make possible the defeat of Germany, Italy, and Japan. If you're going to try to prepare for war in a capitalist country, Secretary of War Stimson said, you have to let business make money out of the process. FDR now found himself working hand in glove with many of the economic royalists whose hatred he'd welcomed just five years earlier. The biggest companies got the biggest contracts and earned the biggest profits. Antitrust laws were overlooked. Taxes on ordinary Americans rose. Again and again, he urged industry to greater efforts. When advisors handed him estimates of what they thought could realistically be achieved, he crossed them out and wrote in larger numbers of his own. The production people can do it if they really try, he said. They did try, and they did do it. His role was to mobilize the forces of the American people behind the war. Without the productivity that this country was able to marshal, by 300,000 planes and 2 million trucks and 5,000 cargo ships, we would never have had the supplies which we gave to our allies in all far corners of the world to win that war. He was directly responsible for getting this country to hum again to support the soldiers at every step along the way. Idle factories were soon back in business. Nearly all manufacturing was converted to the war effort. In 1941, more than three million cars had been manufactured in the United States. Only 139 more were made during the entire war. Instead, Chrysler made fuselages. General Motors made airplane engines, guns, trucks, and tanks. And at its vast Willow Run plant in Ypsilanti, Michigan, 67 acres of assembly lines under a single roof that one observer called the Grand Canyon of the Mechanized World. The Ford Motor Company performed something like a miracle 24 hours a day. The average Ford car had some 15,000 parts. The B-24 Liberator Long Range Bomber had 1,550,000 parts. One came off the line at Willow Run every 63 minutes. War mobilization would give the Allies the crushing superiority in arms Roosevelt insisted they needed for victory. It also brought the Great Depression to an end, creating so many new jobs so fast that for the first time in a generation, there was soon a labor shortage in the United States. Second World War. The defeat of the Third Reich was accomplished using American weapons. So the job was to do what the brain trusters and the New Deal mentality wanted to do anyway, which was mobilize the American people into a great collective effort. And that's what war is. 